privilege to open the Word of God with you once again. If you will, we've been going through the book of Genesis in our evening study on Sundays, and now we pick up in Genesis chapter 22, if you will. Genesis chapter 22, you could entitle the message tonight, Proven Faith, or Tested and Proven Faith. Um, If you will, take in mind, we've been uh, looking at now for a good portion of time, and Um, studying the life and line of Abraham, again, the father of faith. Uh, Again, this man that God had called out of of life in the world and called out and set him on a path to take him to a land uh, that was promised to him. And he promised him, get this, even though he and his wife did not have children and would not even have their own children until he was a hundred years old and she was 90 years old again and we read of that last week and studied that last week yet all in all God stepped in and made him a promise that only God can keep amen and he told him I'm going to give you a son and it would be through that son that again your your um, descendants would be counted You would be made a great nation through your son, specifically even Isaac. You you need to recall that. But again, it was through Isaac that these promises would be given. And let me tell you, my friend, it would also be through Isaac and his descendants that all nations of the world would be blessed. Amen. We're going to see that again mentioned again tonight, but that is vitally important. As we study their their life, Abraham's life, we learn many great things, but also on every page in essence of Scripture, from beginning to end, we see God desiring to bless all the nations of the world. How? By bringing the Messiah through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Amen. God's provision for us. God's um, payment for our sin. He would pay our sin debt and make it to where our sins could be forgiven and we can now be made right with him again. Amen. It's a big deal. But very interestingly, we studied last week of how after even they've waited for decades for that promise to be fulfilled, God kept his promise in his perfect timing. Amen. Just like God to do such a thing. And let me tell you, though, that's the last thing that we looked at. And now tonight we read an amazing portion of text of an event where he would be tested in a great way, where Abraham's faith would be tested in a great way that he would get this, my friend, that he would take his only begotten son in whom he very much loved in whom he waited for decades for and very much loved, he would be asked asked by God to sacrifice him to God. My friend, this would be a testing of Abraham's faith. Much to be learned for us tonight, if you will. Before we start reading in text and um, looking at verse by verse and, and unfolding it, let's bow to the Lord in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we do come to you tonight. We thank you for this day. Thank you so much for um, giving your Son, your perfect and sinless Son, your beloved Son, you in the flesh of dying in our place, dying a death that we rightfully deserve, bearing the cross and dying in our place um, for the only way that our sin debt could be fully paid and we thank you for that we thank you for you giving us the gospel the good news and convicting us of our need for the savior and saving our souls we thank you so much for this we thank you so much for being this merciful for being this gracious this loving but we also thank you now you're not done with us yet You have a life of faith, a life of growing into the image of your son that you have planned out for our whole life. And you desire to do that growing even tonight in our study of your word. May we have a desire now to more 
clearly see your will and understand your will for our life. And may we say, not our will be done, but thine be done. May we leave here desiring to live out your truth and goodness that we read and study tonight. But we love you so much. We thank you so much. Please use me as a vessel, but all of us as we receive and obey your word. And it's in your son's precious name we do pray. Amen. Again, if you will, we're going to, since it's a good portion of text tonight, um, we're going to look verse by verse and, and read, but pay attention as we are going to be reading throughout the text um, this whole time, if you will, and then unfolding what really is being said. So notice this, in this event, there are very important details on every line, things for us to very much learn from. So one, my friend, there are going to be things that we can learn from to increase and grow in our faith. But also notice this, um, even in the life of Abraham, notice and try to pay attention on the pictures of Abraham where he pictures God the Father. There will be very, very um, similar pictures that you will see by looking at what Abraham is doing, Father Abraham is doing, and knowing what God the Father has done for you and me, amen. And when we look at Isaac, this only begotten, beloved son of Abraham, there is many um, similar pictures of what we see in the only begotten, beloved son, Jesus Christ, amen. Much to be learned. And I'll tell you, even we are going to see this amazing provision for our sin um, even a, a picture seen here, even in the life, even of Isaac. So much to learn, but if you will, please pay attention as we study Scripture together. Pay attention to the details, if you will. If you will, verse 1, um, again, Genesis 22, verse 1. And it came to pass, again, some time has passed, we don't know. Uh, we don't know if it's been some 13 to 30 years, we have no idea. Uh, but some time has passed since he was given the promised son, Isaac. And again, after that point, we know um, Isaac has already reached the point where he's weaned. But even some point after this, what happens? It says that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. Pause there for just a moment. Again, you've already saw, seen it, right? What an amazing and very much asking uh, test that God has given to Abraham, right? Can you imagine that? We already said that for just a little bit. This is the son that he waited for decades for. This is the son that he has now been raising his own son, and it is his son that he is his declared here as thine only son, the recognized son, the promised son. And he also says, whom thou lovest. But I'll tell you, my friend, God is now asking him, go, go to Mount Moriah, the land of Moriah, and I'll show you a mountain there. I want you to go there and I want you to offer him as a burnt offering. Can you imagine that? Just, uh, again, we can't try to maybe even put yourself in those shoes. Can you imagine being asked that very, very question? But it's very interesting. This question um, is indeed asked, but I'll just tell you, we already see an overlap. We already see the overlap between Jesus. Jesus is the Son, the only begotten Son of God the Father, and my friend, he was very much the beloved son. I, I bet that Isaac was maybe a good young man, and I bet he found favor and was very much loved and adored by his father. But let me tell you, 
There's been no other greater son than Jesus Christ. Amen? The perfect son. The son in whom God is well pleased. Why? Let me tell you. Jesus is perfect. Amen? Isaac wouldn't have been perfect. We are not perfect. But my friend, Jesus is perfect. Sinless. He is absolutely and fully obedient not to his own will and what he wants but to the will of the father my friend he's beloved of the father but my friend that's where we find ourselves he is being tested to go off for his son you heard that word here though that god did tempt him know this is that this is a testing it is not a tempting to do evil if you will know that this the word of god makes it very clear James 1 and verse 13, guess what? It tells you this, that God cannot tempt man to do evil. Did you hear that? So when you hear this word tempt, you must know that you must see the context. One, it's context of testing of faith, amen? But it is also in context of what God is asking and trying of man, amen? And we know this of God's nature, God Himself cannot sin. Amen? Thank the Lord for that. But also God cannot and will not test man to do evil. Amen? He will not tempt man to do evil. So again, it's even in that very text that if we ever find ourselves in a time where we have um, given in to temptation to sin, let me tell you, it's not God's fault. God didn't cause that in you, right? It's also not the enemy's fault, the devil. Many people want to place blame there. It's also not your circumstances, amen? It's not another person in your life's fault. It's not the world's fault. But that scripture even says it is even sinful desires that is within your own self, even in your own heart. That's why as believers, my friend, we must battle the sin nature daily. We must deny our own sinful desires and, and seek um, godly, the, our, our godly, new godly desires that the Spirit is trying to lead us into. But again, know this, God is testing and He is testing His faith. If you will, now verse 3. It says, And Abraham rose up early in the morning. Pause there for just a minute. I'll just tell you, we already have studied much of the life of Abraham. We've learned much already. Was he a perfect man? No. Was he a righteous man? Yes. Did he seek to um, trust and obey God? Yes. Did he trust in what God had told him and the promise and provision that God had given him? Yes. Um, He was a man of faith, but let me tell you, there were times where he stumbled. There were times where he messed up. There were times where he took matters into his own hands. There were times where he sinned, amen? And I'll tell you, there will be times where you and I will do the same, but it is now to realize that if we are in that time, if we have done that, then let us repent of that and seek to lay that aside so that we may run the race, amen? We have a race, um, a faith race to run, amen? Just like Abraham had his own walk and his own life to live before uh, before God, you and I do as well. But know this, that even though he fell short, what did it say that he did? Can you imagine you being in his shoes? God just revealed to you, I want you to take your son and offer him to me as a burnt offering. He didn't pause and think on it. He didn't say no. He didn't say no, not right now, or no, let me think on it. Let me tell you, it says, verse 3, and Abraham rose up early in the morning. And it says, and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. 
Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eye and saw the place afar off. Pause there for just a moment. My friend, Abraham grew in his faith to the point, did you hear this, that he didn't linger in his obedience. That his faith in God was so strong that he did not delay his obedience. Delayed obedience is disobedience. That's, a, that's us failing to place faith in God. But let me tell you, Abraham had immediate obedience. And let me tell you, it was in something that was going to cost him greatly. Amen. My friend, it's much for us to learn already. He had seen how good God was. Amen. Throughout his whole life, he saw the goodness of God. Amen. My friend, get this. He saw that God has always been true to his promises. Amen. Sometimes that we fail to obey what God calls us to do, we fail to realize how faithful God is in his promise. Amen. But again, let us learn from him. He, he got up and he went. And it said, get this, that he took everything that was needed with him. He took two young men as servants to go with him. He took Isaac with him. He claved the wood for the burnt offering. He rose up and he went to that place. And it said, on the third day, Abraham saw it. God made known to him when he got there after three days' journey. Can you imagine maybe his thoughts for three days of heading to the place where he's going to sacrifice his son. But again, as he gets there, he sees it. Verse 5, if you will. It says, And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and get this, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship. It doesn't stop there, and it says, And come again to you. Did you hear that? Very important. Abraham said this, me and the lad, me and Isaac, we are going to go up this mountain. We are going to worship God. Get this, but he said, we will come back. Did you hear that? He didn't just say, I would by myself come back. He said, we would. My friend, you already see faith here. He has faith that God will keep his promise and what specifically about this promise we're going to get to this and unfold this in a minute in Hebrews 11 if you will but he he knows what God has already promised it was in the chapter before it was in in Genesis 22 and verse 12 that God said this that it would be through Isaac that thy seed would be called did you hear that it would not just be through some descendant of Abraham. He said it would be through Isaac. Let me tell you, God gave a promise. Amen? God spoke. And when God speaks, He is true to everything that He says. Amen? When God makes a promise, He is true. He, is a tra he has a track record of being true and faithful to every promise, amen? And we'll get there in just a moment, but you and me, I'll tell you, there are multiple, multiple times throughout our life, constantly, daily, I hope, where we cling to the promises that God has given us, amen? I'll just tell you, I would be without hope if I did not continue to learn of the promises that He has made you and me, amen? I would be without hope. I would be complaining nonstop, amen? But with the promises of God, you can trust firmly and fully in that, amen? I'll tell you, without the Word of God, without the good, good promises that God has given to us, our life would be completely different, amen? Our everyday life would be completely different. But get this. He told them, look, we're coming back. Verse 6. It said, And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering, and get this, and laid it upon Isaac his son. 
Do you see a picture there of Jesus? That He would lay the wood on which the burnt offering that would be His own Son would be laid. Where His Son would be laid on the wood, it is laid upon Him to carry it up the mount. My friend, I'll tell you with Christ, Christ bore the cross, the wooden cross, amen? He bore it and He would be carrying it on to the way of which He would give His life on the cross of Calvary for us, amen? But get this if you will. It says, and, and he took and, and he took the fire in his hand. He lays the wood on Isaac. He takes the fire in his hand and also a knife. And they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father, and he said, Here am I. I'm listening, my son. It says, and he said, Behold, the fire and the wood. He says this, look, I see the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? I'll tell you, this is a very important question. He says, but where is the lamb? That question's going to be answered some 2,000 years later, amen? But get this, he says, where is the lamb for a burnt offering? He, Isaac's smart enough to be putting two and two together. I don't see the sacrifice, right? I don't see the lamb that's going to be slain and be burnt on the offering. It says, but he told him, get this. Um, he tells him this. Uh, he says, and Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering so they went, both of them, together. This is amazing. You ready? He tells him, look, God will provide himself a lamb. Not only would God provide himself a lamb, but get this, he would actually provide himself as the lamb. That get this, Jesus is the Son of God. He is God the Son. He is God robed in human flesh amen he is the um second person of the of the of the trinity of god amen he is god in the flesh and my friend we know that with jesus he will provide himself the lamb amen and it, and what did it say though that was actually good enough for isaac can you imagine the trust in what the father said God will provide, right? And it said they go together. It doesn't just mean that they walked, they walked together. It actually meant they walked in unison. They walked agree, agreeably to the point where the sacrifice would take place. Verse 9, and I'll tell you even that with, with, with Christ. Christ willingly gave himself, amen? He did. We studied about that this morning. Verse 9, if you will, and they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. Pause there for just a moment. Let me tell you, we don't know exactly how old Isaac is at this time, but he's smart enough, he's capable enough. Get this, Abraham is um, already, in his, already past 100 years old. I believe that if, if Isaac didn't want to be bound, he wouldn't have been bound. But I'll tell you, even with Christ, if Christ didn't want to go to the cross, he had, he had the option of willingly going or not. I'll tell you, it wasn't the nails that held him to the cross, amen? He could have got down in essence at any moment, but yet he willingly submitted to the will of the Father, amen? He willingly did. He even said, not my will be done, but thy will be done. If there's any other way that this bitter cup of suffering could pass from me, let it be done, and that was said for our good, amen? 
Let me tell you, there was no other way that salvation could be made possible, amen, other than the suffering and death of that bitter cup that Jesus partook, amen? There was no other way. And God made that very clear. Scripture even said, look, if there is any way for you to save yourself, Jesus would have died in vain. That God the Father would have offered His Son in vain. That it would have been senseless. But let me tell you, God the Father is a God of all wisdom. He knew it was the only way, amen? And Jesus said, look, not my will be done, but thy will be done. He willingly laid on the altar as well. This is what Isaac did. He's on the altar, and just imagine, put yourself in, in, in viewing this side. It says in verse 10, And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. He takes knife in hand and he gets ready to slay his own son. It says, verse 11, And the angel of the Lord, And the angel of the Lord called out, um, called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither go thou, um, do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from God, from me. Get this for just a moment. I love this. My friend, the angel of the Lord is a reference to Jesus Christ. It is a pre-incarnate appearance of Jesus Christ. It is God in the flesh. It's Jesus. And it says that He would cry out even from heaven and tell Abraham, no, don't you lay a hand on that boy. Right? Don't you um, go through with it. He actually said this, um, uh, I know now that you fear the Lord. I know now that you did. You wouldn't even withhold your own son. He even said, thy only, thy only son. He actually says, for me. Again, this is telling us another time the divinity even of, of Jesus. Right? You, you didn't even withhold your only son for me. But again, get this. Think about this for a moment. This reminds me of a, some words that we see even in the New Testament as well. That if you are doubting how much God loves you, if you are doubting, get this, in your circumstances, in your hardships, in your persecutions, in any of your life, if you are doubting that God loves you, remind yourself of the truth that is found in the book of Romans that he says, look, God did not hold back his own son for you. Amen? You needed your sin debt to be paid. And God went as far as giving his own son to die on your behalf. Amen? So if you ever get to a point again where you doubt that what, how could God love me? How could God love me after what I've done? How could God love me after how I've fallen short? How could God love me in the time maybe where you doubt because of the circumstances that you are going through or the hardships that you are going through? Let me tell you, even though you face hardships, never doubt this truth and this promise that God loves you. Amen. If you have trusted in Christ, you are in Christ, let me tell you, nothing, Romans goes on to say that thing in the very chapter, that you need to be convinced that nothing, absolutely nothing, can separate you from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. I'll tell you, that is one promise that I have to keep going back to. Amen. And if you want to continue to grow in the faith and continue to live a life of faith that is pleasing to God, that's one of the many promises that you need to grab hold of as well. Amen. Even in those circumstances of persecution, 
I don't know what our life will hold here in America. I don't know how bad things will get while we are still, still yet here. But let me tell you, as the end time approaches, things will get worse. Persecution of the Lord's church and believers will get worse. But let me tell you, despite all of that, despite even the hardships that you face in your life now, you may be tempted at some times to, to complain about your lot. We all are tempted at times to do that. You might think life's not fair. Why would I go through that? How can I believe, God, that you love me if I'm being allowed to go through this? Remind yourself of another promise, my friend. God says for the believer that he will use all things for your good. Amen? Do you believe that? Will you believe that? That's a promise, my friend, again, if you, we want to keep pressing on in the faith, that's a promise that you must keep reminding yourself of. Again, and it may be in times where you, you can't see the good that could possibly come out of it. But let me tell you, God's ways are not ours, amen? Let me tell you, God sees the big plan God sees your whole life. God sees the, the whole life of all believers around you and all believers throughout the centuries. And let me tell you, God is working a plan that is for His glory and for your good, amen? For your good and growth. My friend, please take hold of that promise and don't doubt Again, if you will, we see this amazing, amazing, we're reminded of that amazing love on behalf of God towards us, that he wouldn't hold back his own son for us. But again, even in Abraham, we see this. His faith was tested, and guess what? He passed the test. He actually says it was proven. He himself even was able to see it. We, today, we learn of the great faith of Abraham. This is one of the reasons why he is in the hall of faith, amen, and recorded even in Hebrews 11, because we see his great faith, that he would fear God, that he would love and adore God so much and trust God so much that what? That he would go as far as to offer his son, but again, I love that, that Jesus Christ himself even spoke into the situation and said, look, don't hurt your son. What happens next, though? Verse 13. And it said, And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in the thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead, in the place of his son and Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah-Jireh. Um, as it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. Again, Jehovah-Jireh, that the Lord, um, in this place that the Lord shall be seen, it also means that the Lord shall provide. And I love that. Did God provide here? Yes, He did. My friend, let me tell you, uh, even this Mount Moriah, it is believed that it is in this same location that Mount Calvary is, is in the same location. Why do you think God said, you go, look, you travel, I love this, three days. He, and again, I love this. He made that decision to get up in obedience. And he travels three days. In essence, he already in his heart sacrificed his son. And get this, he travels three days and he gets to that place where God appointed him to offer his son. And it's in that very place that it would be said, the Lord will provide. In this very situation, let me tell you, the Lord provided. Amen? Let me tell you, I love this. Again, we, we see this testing and know the nature of God. He is testing His faith. 
But know this, do you recall how the Lord said unto Abraham, Abraham, don't touch him. I love this. That it, it was God, it was the Lord himself, let me tell you, that would not allow him to touch him. Did you hear that? We can't look at this text and be like, is God cruel? Is God trying to get him to do something that is evil? Let me tell you, God is testing his faith and he passed the test and in so doing, he was painting a picture for us of what God was actually willing and actually did do for you and me. Amen? But let me tell you, he would not have allowed him to drop that knife down on his son. Amen? Was he going to test him? Yeah. Did he pass the test? Yes, he did. Amen? I'll tell you, Scripture, God will make evidently clear that you do not offer up a human sacrifice. Amen? I'll tell you, all around the Israelite people, there would be offering of human sacrifice. There were times where to false gods that they would throw their children on a burning altar. Let me tell you, God tested him here, but let me tell you, it is God that would never have allowed him to do it. Amen? He wouldn't have allowed him to do it, but he would love us so much that he would give himself on our behalf. That was the provision that was needed. And without that provision, me, me and you, my friend, we would be burning eternally. We would be separated from God with no hope. But with Christ, we have the only way of salvation. But let me tell you, again, that, that offering um, of human life was condemned. There would even be times where God's own people would go into this very sin where the world would influence them. My friend, sadly, and this angered God. God didn't desire this. Mankind is, is made in the image of God and precious in the sight of God. Amen. God desires to preserve life. I'll tell you today, my friend, are there... Are there certain made-up false gods that we see people throwing their own children on the altar? Maybe not literally, but I'll tell you it is happening. I've even heard it worded this way that on the, the altar of convenience, we live sadly in a generation where billions of babies have been thrown upon the altar of convenience where babies have been conceived and the person that is there to love that child like no one else has thrown the baby away to death on the altar of convenience for her. But let me tell you, my friend, you and me, just like with Israel, was told, don't you dare take on the customs of the world. You and me, let us never take on the customs of that customs of the world. Amen. Life should be vitally valued to you and me. Amen. Life is so, it, life's value is seen so clearly that we see that, the, that God would give his only son the most precious gift that could ever be given. The most valuable price that could ever be paid was paid for you and me. Amen. That shows the value of the human life in God's eyes. But again, God would provide, again, it would be the same mountaintop that it would be seen as Mount Calvary. And let me tell you, God gave provision, again, our only provision for our sin debt. Verse 15, if you will, let's pick up. It says, and the angel of the Lord, again, the Lord Jesus himself called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, by myself have I sworn, he swears upon him his own self, upon his own name, on his own character. He says, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing and hast not with, withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee. And in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven 
And as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. Get this, very important. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. Again, God is confirming again this amazing promise to Abraham. Get this, after this great test of his faith. His faith was true indeed, amen, it went to the core. His faith was true indeed that it was seen even in his obedience to God, amen. And you and me, my friend, true faith again is seen in us by a desire to obey the Lord. Do we fall short? Yes. Did Abraham throughout his life fall short? Yes. But my, fr my friend, our life as a whole should be a desire to obey the voice of God, amen. But again, he reconfirmed that promise. But I'll even share with you that verse 18 again. It's, again, it's core. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Again, New Testament makes that very clear. That this is in reference to the very fact. Again, all this is taking place on the, the mount of provision that the Lord will provide. He is reminding him again that look, it's through your seed that all nations of the world would be blessed. Can you see that again? That um, he is reminding again that God's provision, the Messiah, the Savior, Jesus Christ, his only begotten, his beloved son, his perfect son, would be slain in this very place through the seed of Isaac. Again, ama amazing and great promise. Verse 19, it says, so Abraham returned unto his young men. I love that, as he said he would. It said, and they arose up and went together to Beersheba, and Abraham dwelt at Beersheba. Pause there for a minute. It says that he came back down, and I mentioned it, he came back down as he said he would. Let me, let me recall this to you for just a moment. Hebrews eleven thirteen. Uh, excuse me, 17 through 19. But I'll challenge you, go back and read that whole hall of faith, if you will. But this is sharing with us a little bit what was going on even in the heart of Abraham, how his faith was actually seen to be real. It says this. It says, by faith, Abraham, when he was tried, again, that, that temptation means trying, he was tried. His faith was tried. It said, offered up Isaac and that he had received um, the promises offer, or excuse me, offered up his only begotten son of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead. From whence also he received in him a figure. Pause there for a moment. This is making the picture clear to you and me. Again, when he said to them, me and my boy, we're going to come back down. We're going to go worship God, but we're coming back down. My friend, when he said that, he believed it. Amen? He had faith. Why? Why? Because he had faith in the promise that God gave him, it was going to be through Isaac. It was going to be through Isaac that the descendants would be counted, amen, and all these other promises be, be given. But let me tell you, it, it, it said that he, it was accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead. My friend, let me tell you, Abraham believed this. This is even a picture of resurrection. Abraham believed that if he was to drop that knife and sacrifice his son, that even on that mount, God would raise him from the dead and give him back to him. Amen? Let me tell you, that's faith. That is faith in the promises of God, and that is what you and I, we need. But it also says, and I'll tell you, God would do that, and only God can do that, amen? 
He would raise His own Son, but also everyone who have trust in the Son, He will raise you and I as well to life. Amen? But He says, from whence also He received Him in a figure. This is really just painting that picture that did, did, did Abraham, this whole passage, did Abraham actually drop the knife? No. Did he actually offer him? Physically, no. But he, did he obey and was he going to? Yes. Right? He offered him even in his heart. He was in the process of getting ready to drop the knife when God intervened and stopped his hand. So let me tell you, he offered him, and as we said earlier, it took them three days to get there. So he offered him in his heart. They traveled three days, and it was, it was on that third day as, he was, as his hand was stopped. Let me tell you, in a figure, God gave him back. Amen? That God, did he offer his son? Yeah, he did in his heart. Did God raise him and give him back? In a figure, he did. Amen? I love that God would even bless him uh, and provide for him. And again, he wouldn't require Isaac, but our sin debt required Jesus. If you will, I'll just read these last few verses. In verse 20, it says this of Genesis 22. And it came to pass after these things that it was told Abraham, saying, Behold, uh, Milcah, she hath also bo uh, born children unto thy brother Nahor. Um, Huz is firstborn, and Buzz his brother, and Kemuel, the father of Aram, and Chizid, and uh, Hazel, and Pildash, and Gidlaf, and Bethuel. And Bethuel begat Rebekah. These, these eight Milcah did bear to Nahor, Abraham's brother, and his concubine, whose name, uh, whose name was Rima, she bare also uh, Teba, and Gaham, and uh, Thahash, and Raka. So again, this is just really, this is leading us into two chapters to come where it would even be through this line that as it mentioned here, uh, that Rebecca, um, that provided a son even for Isaac would be, um, be given. And again, already be set, setting up for those descendants um, to be given and to be brought. And again, as we know to be uh, the son of God uh, being offered for us. But let me, let me end with just a, a thought here this evening. Again, where it had said this phrase, where Isaac looked around and he said, I, I see everything else. I see the wood. I see the fire. Where's the lamb? I'll tell you just a few moments later, they didn't find the lamb, but they found a ram, right? They didn't find the lamb. But again, let me tell you, it was some 2,000 years later that recorded in, in the first chapter of the book of John that John the Baptist would actually answer the, that question that Isaac asked, where's the lamb? Where's the lamb? God said, again, it would be in this place that the provision would be given, but here's the answer, behold the lamb. Again, as Jesus would come, in much pleasing the Father, come even in the start of His ministry, and come and being baptized by John the Baptist, John the Baptist, prophet of God, forerunner of Jesus Christ, who would pave the way for the Messiah, he would look to Jesus and he would say this, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. My friend, know this to be true. Again, Isaac, Isaac didn't need to be sacrificed, but Jesus did. It was a... It was a cost that God the Father was very much willing to make on our behalf. That he would give himself. He would give his own son. That Jesus would willingly lay down his life on our behalf. Again, as it said, the Lamb of God, precious Lamb of God, who came actually to die. Again, born in a stable, came and seen by shepherds, 
laid in a manger, the Lamb who would humbly and willingly come to die for you and me. And again, behold, the Lamb that takes away the sins of the world. I'll tell you, my friend, our greatest problem, sin, the consequence of our sin, death, separation from God, death and hell, my friend, the only provision that could be given was given, amen, the Lamb of God, who would die in our place willingly, who would suffer the death that I'll just tell you I deserve, that you and me both, we deserve, that he, he would take away the sins of the world. And get this, that that forgiveness of sin, that salvation would be put to the account of all those who would believe. All those who would repent of sin and trust in Jesus, the only provision as our personal Savior, we would be forgiven of sins, our sins gone now right and accepted before God, knowing Him now, but spending eternity getting to know Him even more. Amen. We have a good God. I pray that we are thankful for our God. And again, He may not ask you to give your life physically in death for Him, but I'll tell you, He wants us to live for Him daily. He's given His Son to live and die in our place. Will we get up on the altar of a sacrifice of living for Him. Amen. If we will, let's close our life feed and let's close in a time.